What's up, everybody? Mike Cam here, host of Greetings from the Garden State, powered by the New Jersey Lottery. We're back with a brand new episode with Mark Conklin. Mark, welcome to the show. Mike, great to be with you. Absolutely. So we're here at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, in the Prudential Lounge. The almost brand new Prudential Lounge. Almost yes. brand new. Yes. Um, and it's, you know, I've been in here before games, before concerts, imbibing in food and beverage options, which yep. are always great here at the Prudential Center. Um, so let's let's kind of talk about you a little bit first. Let's let the people know who you are, what you do, um, and then we'll kind of get into like the story and, and all that and, and what the purpose of this uh, episode is. Well, my favorite subject is myself. So Perfect. That's, that's worse than You're going to do great on this episode then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my favorite word is my name. Um, no, I, I uh, like a lot of young people, I, I started off as a musician and through a lot of years of music, I ended up here as the Vice President of Artist Relations and Programming at the Prudential Center, and I oversee a program that's called Record High. Okay. So we teach young people how to have careers both on the stage and off the stage, and our focus really is bridging the gap with, you know, for, for them to understand that there are other uh, opportunities for them. Sure. Uh, that, you know, they could be an artist manager or a producer or work in tech and things yeah. like that. So that's what we really do is we're committed to that. And that's an overall uh, view. Obviously, we'll talk more in detail about the programs. But yeah, basically, we're, we're teaching young people how to have careers in music and entertainment. Yeah. And so let's get a little bit into your background. Um, so you said musician. Are you a, are you a Jersey guy? Uh, Born and raised. Middlesex County, South you. Plainfield, New Jersey. Yeah. Awesome. Which we love. Yeah. So say Jersey guy, uh, musician. I think you told me when we first talked on the phone uh, that there was like a record label involved too that you started. Is that correct? Well, actually, I, I started off like a lot of people playing in bars and clubs. Sure. And played all the places you can think of a lot in New Brunswick, okay. uh, especially. Yeah. Um, quite a scene there. Quite a scene there for many yeah. years. Court Tavern, you name it. Um, and then I got at some point decided I didn't want to be out at night, didn't want to be traveling on the weekends. So I started writing songs for other people okay. and producing records. Uh, and flying back and forth to Nashville. That was sort of my home away from home for a long time. Sure. And had a lot of success in film and television, commercials, movies, TVs, things like that, which was nice. And sort of fell then into artist management. Okay. And so um, I started managing artists a lot from New Jersey who did very well. And um, we had a good long run at that. And then at some point I came back to my own career of writing songs and, and putting out music and what you'd mentioned is recently I put out, uh, my, I signed my first record deal at 50 something years old and uh, <laughs> shouldn't have said it, but uh, on my first deal <laughs> and just put out a gospel record actually okay. called The Gospel According to Mark on Stowtown Records. So still creative. And I think that's what's so great for me is that I've now seen this business from every side that there is. Sure both creatively and on the business side of things. Yeah. And so I'm able to, hopefully I'm able to teach that, uh, you know, and ex explain that to other people yeah. as well and to young people. Totally. And so can you take me through a little bit, maybe, you know, as an artist and then kind of getting into like the business side of it, that's gotta be, cause I feel like a lot of times creatives just like to be in that creative yeah. world and they don't necessarily like look at what they're doing as a business, even though if you do, it does, in a sense, give you an opportunity to create more. Right. Right. So like take me through kind of like learning the business of music really. And then kind of how that, um, eventually got to, got you to where you are. It's interesting you say that because most musicians are not business minded. Sure. Um, there are fewer of us types than there are people otherwise. But for me, I found that what happened, I would start going to these songwriting workshops and I really was focused on the craft and the art of songwriting. But when they would tell stories about how they got the songs placed, the kind of connections they made to do it, how they got paid, how the money worked, I remember finding myself really interested in all that. Yeah. Um, so it's really necessary, especially if you're on your own doing it, that you're able to navigate that and sure. treat yourself as a, you, you are your own business. You're in business for yourself. Yeah. That's something that we try to teach young people all the time is that it's not just enough if you want to be a chef. You want to own a restaurant. It's not enough to be able to cook. Right. You have to be able to make a menu and deal with zoning laws exactly. and hire people. Right. So that was very important for me to learn that. And really, it was just having a few mentors that 
you know, I could ask questions of. Yeah. A uh, good friend of mine who was an entertainment attorney was a great help to me. Sure. Because I was able to kind of ask him how things were structured so that when I went into these meetings, I was able to, and you know, I was able to ask the right questions and get the right information. And I think that's really important for any musician to be able to do that. Yeah. Because I think like, especially now where it seems like, and we, don't, we won't spend too much time on this because I know we're here to talk about record high and all that. Um, it's, it certainly seems now, particularly like you said, artists that are kind of out on their own doing their own thing. It's almost imperative that you know how the business works Have because to. if you don't, you just get eaten up and then yeah. like no one even like you make a penny every now and then from from the songs that you're working so hard to produce and pay for and right. and all that kind of stuff so it's it's really important you know especially like I, I feel like now now more so maybe than ever well and the other reason is that you have to do it now because so many times now you're putting out your own records right. distributing your own the old days that didn't happen yeah you, you had a team of people that did everything now you have to be able to do that in order to generate income yeah Eventually, you can build a team around you, um, but even then, you need to know what sure. something that they know so that you don't get burned. <laughs> right, so don't take all that. stuff. I've yeah, seen that a few times. Exactly, it's a yeah. tale as old as time. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's kind of pick your story back up. So um, you put out your most recent record recently. Yeah. How long ago did you say? In May. Right? In May. Yeah. Of this year. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, but you've been involved with the Prudential Center in a couple different facets um, for how long? Almost six years. Okay, so six years ago, uh, what were you doing when you first started here? So I had been, uh, I'd ran a music division for a company in New York, okay. an artist management uh, division. <laughs> that ended, and I had to make a decision as to whether I was going to continue in the business side mm. or if I wanted to go back to the creative side. And I had a sort of an epiphany one day. I was down at the, I was in the Poconos at the side of the lake. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? You know, what, what, what is it that you want me to do? And I sort of heard this sort of inside this voice, not out loud. It wasn't, you know, and sure. Take me away. And the lake part. Of right. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that, <laughs> but I heard teach and make music. Yeah. And I had done teaching. I had uh, done summer camps uh, for many years, teaching songwriting and audio production. And I said, all right, teach and make music. What does that mean? I said, I don't know, but I'll go do it. So I started writing songs. I literally started writing uh, my first country EP at that point. But the other thing I did was I started looking for a partner that I could teach programs to teach camps. Yeah. I drove by the Prudential Center right down this street in front of us. Yep. Coming to a devil's game one night with my brother-in-law. And I saw this line. It's a Grammy museum. Like It's like an oasis sure. in the desert. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, oh, I'd heard about that, but I'd forgotten. So I looked into it. I reached out to them, thought, I'll just do some summer camps or something. Sure. And they said, uh, a long story, but after about six months, they said, Mark, would, is this something you'd be interested in, in running this museum? And I said, no. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, at the time, I was managing artists. And right. Again, I was working on music. And I thought, no, I don't, I, I don't, what do I want to do? I don't know anything about museums or like well, guys with white gloves. Sure. It's not my thing. Yeah. But they said, no, you'll develop the education programming you'll do the programming itself to host the nights that we do nights called an evening with, and we'd have an evening with Mary Wilson from the Supremes or wow. Jay Khaled or sure, yeah, yeah. Philip Bailey from earth, wind and fire. I said, you'll book those and you'll host those. And I thought, Oh, well that's, that's cool. Sure. I, so I'll throw my hat in the ring. I did. And amazingly, after a long process, I got the, the gig as they say. And so then I was like, Oh, now I've got a day job. Yeah. Actually, right. I have yeah. to figure out how to make all this work. So for the first Five years, I ran the Grammy Museum Experience Prudential Center, which okay. was this room. The Prudential Lounge was oh, okay. this room. Yeah, yeah. When the deal ended with um, the Grammy Museum Foundation uh, at in Los Angeles, uh, they decided they didn't want to continue the relationship. They didn't want the remote locations. But we at Prudential Center were still very much committed to the work that we'd been doing with the museum, mm -hmm. with teaching young people. Right. So we said, okay, how do we now move this into the next phase into something that it's our own? So we had rebranded it under this umbrella that we call Record High. And now we're still doing all the same programming. In fact, a lot more. Yeah. We're just doing it without a physical museum, sure. a space that people can come to. So while we missed the museum in one sense, this actually freed us up to be able to do lots of more things in the community 
and that's really what's very important is for uh, you know for for this organization, for our managing partners, for our CEO, for our president. It's it's making a difference in the communities where we live, work, and play. Yeah, and so we're excited now that we're able to do that and bring these programs, you know, beyond Newark into other you know areas all throughout the state. Yeah, and so can you take me through kind of just like maybe the evolution of the, the five years that you were running the museum and you said, you know, education side of it and all that and kind of the evolution of that and the things that you were able to implement there that maybe you're still implementing now. Yeah. Um, so I would imagine like when it first starts, it's like, all right, let's, let's start with one thing instead right. of like a bunch of things, but then maybe kind of building, you know, a, a base out and then kind of adding on to that as you kind of go. The big thing that we started was our summer camp. Uh, so our summer camp we were teaching songwriting, some audio production, hip hop lyric writing, vocal performance. And we would have students from Newark, but from every, we had students from Manhattan, we had students a lot from Central Jersey. Yeah. And they would all come here and we would spend, at first to start off as, a, I think it was three days. It was three days doing songwriting at the end, they'd play their little songs. We've grown that now to this last summer, we did a five week program with the Newark Board of Education yeah. at Arts High School. And now it's grown to a much bigger scope. We have guest artists come in. We have guest artists on Zoom. So the kids get a chance to interact with a lot of um, people who are doing this professionally. Yes. Because that's what we find is very important. It's, it's one thing to teach it, but we want the people who teach it and the people they learn from to have experience having done this. Sure. Um, so that, and, and recent experience, so they can talk about real world things that are happening now, not Back in the 60s, when they, yeah, sure. you know, uh, yeah, yeah. we wanted to know what's kind of the, the, the landscape as it is now. So that's a big pro from that program. Now we've expanded it out into um, audio workshops, both in the studio. We'll take young people, high school students into a studio, teach them the basics. They get to record a song in a, in a live working studio. Yeah. Um, and we do programs here where we teach them live audio and lighting. So for kids that want to get into tech programs, we're teaching them that. So that's really out of the summer camp, sort of that hands-on camps. Sure. We've really grown that uh, quite a bit and looking to do even more now in the next year uh, as well. Especially, um, you know, our real hope is that we're going to develop a program where young kids who are really talented but don't maybe have the, not only the knowledge, but the connections. Sure. We want to be able to bridge that gap. Yes. Yeah. Information is one thing, but access is another. Totally. So that's part of what Record High, what we want to do is be able to provide them access to people in the industry. And fortunately, that's where my years of experience and having been in the industry, it helps. It helps yeah. that I can pick up a phone or send an email. And, and people are very willing to, it's, it's amazing. People in the industry are very willing to give their time. Yeah. Um, they like mentoring. So we're, that's what we're building now is that type of programming. Over the years, you know, whether it was maybe the Grammy Museum or the stuff that you're doing specifically now with Record High, was there ever like um, I don't know, maybe pinch me moment might not be the right word, but just kind of like a moment in time where, you know, you said when you were kind of thinking what you wanted to do with this next chapter of life and doing all these things where you were like, yep, this is it. Like, this is the right place for me to be. There was a, there's a lot. I always say I... Well, it's probably hard to whittle down. Yeah. Well, I always say that I, I said it the other night. I say I have the best job in the state. Yeah. And I, and I believe that because if you love music like I do, and if you love sports like I do... Sure. Um, to work at a place like Prudential Center, which is, you know, the fifth biggest venue of its kind in the country now, um, to have that access, to be able to do things with artists... I remember now, you talk about Jersey guys. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're old enough to remember a band called the Smithereens, but they're, of course, of course, Smithereens. Yeah. So when I was a kid, they were the biggest thing in the world to me. I was 17. They were my heroes. We were playing their cover songs and stuff. Yeah. So when we were here at the museum talking about the pinch me moment, we had a case called New Jersey Legends. And so one night we decided, well, I, we're going to put, in fact, when I got interviewed, they told me, oh, the New Jersey Legends case, this display, you'll be responsible for that, updating and putting new people in. And I literally, on my notepad, wrote the Smithereens. Yeah. Because I thought, I want to get them in there. Sure. So the Often night... An unsung Jersey band. He, yes. You know? Unsung. Like, yeah, like forgotten amongst the Bruce's, Whitney's, Frank's, right. all these, you know, right. mega, and, mega songs. And yet, really impactful. Sure. Influenced a lot. Influenced Nirvana. Totally. Kurt Cobain's talked yeah. about it. Um, 
So I got to put them in that case and then do an evening with them here. Oh, man, that's where crazy. I got to crazy. interview them. They played. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, like, how did this, you know, yeah, right. how did I get here? Yeah. You know, how does this happen? And so all those moments, um, I, I did a presentation for Dion Warwick one night and I thought, like, when I was a kid in the 70s, you know, if my, if, if I told my family, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this thing with Dion Warwick. Yeah. You know, no one would believe it. So there's a lot of those moments. But at the same time, when we did our first camp and we had a young woman, a teenager who was came in really shy, really, you know, nervous about the whole thing. By the last day, not only is she friends with everybody, she's playing her first fully original song by herself. And there are tears in the, you could, I mean, see everyone yeah. crying in the audience. And I thought, oh, this is really, like, this, this is, is what, it. it's, what it's all about. So, yeah, yeah there's those pinch me moments with these smithereens. <laughs> sure. But the real fulfilling work is when you see a young person realizing that for themselves. So, yeah, I always say I, I'm, I do have the best job in the state. I'm yeah. very fortunate. Oh, I'm jealous. Uh, so when you're the, the Grammy Museum decides that they don't want to continue with the remote locations, but then you still want to continue with the work uh, that you're doing now with Record High. Take me through some of the stuff that maybe you can do now and that you've implemented as Record High that maybe you were, I don't know, if limited. I don't know if it would be limited, but couldn't do maybe limited is the right word uh before that it's more about um who we can partner with sure and geography <clears throat> okay so because harris blitzer sports and entertainment also owns the philadelphia 76ers yeah. in, in washington commanders we're able now to do programming outside of our area so i'm able so we have a, an example we have a program called virtual mini Masterclass where I'll interview an artist or a producer or a business person about their career on Zoom, and we'll have anywhere from 100 to 500 students from the area and their classes, their teachers are on with them, getting to interact, ask questions, and learn. Yeah. Well, now I can do that programming. I can add Philadelphia. I can add D.C. I can, sure. you know, there's different places that I can do it. So I have a bigger reach beyond what we're doing just here. So our hope is that we can pilot all these programs here right. and then be able to expand them more nationally. That I was not able to do. Um, that was really probably the biggest thing that I could not do because the Grammy Museum had, you know, they had the national reach, sure. rightfully so, of course. Their, their brand. Yeah. So that's what's really opened up is it's the ability now to do more with more kids in different places. The Mayo Performing Arts Center is the heart of arts and entertainment in Morristown, New Jersey. MPAC presents over 200 events annually and is home to an innovative children's arts education program. To see MPAC's upcoming schedule of world-class concerts, stand-up comedy, family shows, and more, head to mayoarts.org or just click the link in our show notes. Is there like a, a connection? Because you know Newark in and of itself has a lot of history, particularly like in hip-hop and, and all that kind of stuff, similar to kind of what you were talking right. about with the courses that you're teaching the kids now <clears throat> excuse me and i would imagine that relationship with you know folks from this particular area like this city must be helpful you know it kind of give like a roadmap almost for kids to be like hey look this person came from here this person came from here right that kind of thing right yeah no doubt and 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 that's the other thing too is that the young people need to see I try to bring in like our, our assistant instructors who are college age instead of just, you know, old guys like me. You know, yeah, I right. try to find people that they can see that, oh, you're, you're in college now. You're doing this. You're having success. You have a career path. And they get a chance to talk with them. And so we try to give them something, you know, and see people who are from here, too. You know, we had um, MC Vert, the, the producer from here. Mm -hmm. um, did something with him as well. And that's, that's important is to be able to show them, Hey, these are people who went to high school here. They're from here. This is something that's possible for you because a lot of times it just seems so far. I know when I was a kid, I, it seemed so remote and far away. I, yeah. I couldn't have imagined. Yeah. You could like, you don't know how it's almost like how closely connected you are with that person. Right. Even though like they basically started at the same place, they just, you know, they went to here. And all you have to do is do that, make that same right. jump. And it sounds so simple, but I think that that is one of the great things about kind of what you guys are doing is the fact that you 
bridge those gaps and like kind of you, you said uh, you know information is one thing but kind of connections and kind of yeah. greasing the skids almost between right. you know increasing or like decreasing the separation from from those folks is super important and that's why we say careers community and connection yeah right? those are our three yeah. C's and it's not only connection to the industry but it's also connections with the kids right because I what I'm amazed at and my favorite part is now I'll get kids who did our first and second camps so we're talking four no almost six years ago yeah uh, four and five six years ago and they're collaborating on yeah. things now and they'll post really cool. things online and I think man that's amazing that we created that connection that that they're able to do that and so we'll have alumni events and they all come back yeah and so that's what we're trying to create is that kind of sort of a familial atmosphere for young people mm. because I know like as I said when I was 18 I was talented but I didn't have like any sense of where to go sure. or what to do. So it's only about 34. Took- <laughs> I still feel that way. You know? So it took me probably like 20 years to start like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So my hope is like, can I shave that down to five years for these? Can I help, you know, get them in a quarter of the time to get somewhere yeah. that would save them some time and effort? And maybe they start making money at this earlier. Sure. Yeah, I do think that that, you know, in a lot of the stuff that I do, whether it's like the podcasting or now the radio station, all the stuff that we're working on, like the people that do this for, you know, four or five years that like never make a dime and then they like pull the plug on it. If you maybe it's like one of those things, if you stick, suck with it for six more months, one more year, yeah. maybe like that was the moment that you needed for the right person to see you or connect with you. Right. Or whatever. So like to take it from 20 down to three to five or something, you know, I think that that's super important you know yeah and and you're right though that people um i always say the, the only thing you can't do is quit right you know because if you if you quit you've sort of given it up yeah uh, and you will miss those opportunities and and usually that's the other thing too you know it's not there is no what they say every overnight success is 10 years in the making yeah, you know? exactly it yeah. might be 20 and they were years in the making but the other thing that's important for we want people to understand is that this is a I always tell them it's not a career choice. It's a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to do music, if you're going to do this forever, then you decide you're going to do that. And then you start to figure out how to make money at and how to make a living and how to get through it. Yeah. Um, But you make the choice first to to do it as a lifestyle. Totally. And so we did we did touch on a little bit uh, before. And I I think it does kind of speak for itself. But just the Prudential Center as a whole and kind of the resources that it has, particularly like in in this area and the uh, relationship that like we've done stuff with Sean Seda, we've done stuff with the devils before, um, for the show. And I do think there is a very clear distinction of how important the Newark community is to everyone here. Right. And how much of like a, like that relationship and making sure that you're, you know, giving back in ways that, you know, uh, whether it's the devil's youth foundation or record high and, and all that. So, um, can we just speak to, the resources and stuff that maybe Prudential Center has and how you're able to um, combine those with the programs that you're putting together. Because I do think that's interesting in kind of figuring out ways to, like, oh, we do, you know, PR. We do, you know, like, right. obviously, like, production-level stuff. We work directly with artists. And, like, how do we create programs that maybe tap into some of those um, strengths that you guys have here? Well, that's, that's a great point. So a couple of hard examples. First, on the Devil's Youth Foundation, we actually do a annual scholarship now. It's a record high and Devil's Youth Foundation um, for 12 high school seniors in New Jersey. They submit for it, and it's a music scholarship. So we pick, like, the best 12. Then we have them come here for a uh, reception, a performance. They get to stay for the game cool. in a suite. You know, yeah. we give them dinner. So that's, like, an example of how we partner with Devil's Youth Foundation. But here's a great one. We have a program called All Access. So we'll take about 15 high school students, bring them here before a concert. We obviously, we get permission uh, from the artist at yeah. the artist camp. We do a workshop on careers in behind-the-scenes careers, and then they get a tour, usually with the production manager or the tour manager, of the space. They walk the stage. Sometimes we've had, like, kids get to play Mark Anthony's drums. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, sometimes meet the artist, take pictures. We've taken pictures with... Uh, uh, Sean Mendez, and I remember thinking, like, you send your kid to another camp. He's not, <laughs> he or she is not yeah. meeting Sean Mendez. Exactly. You know? um, yeah. But here we are. And so that's, that's what access here to, to things like this gives us. Yeah. 
that if we were anywhere else, we wouldn't have. And because the diversity of the programming here is so great, right? that's what's awesome, too, is that we'll have hip-hop, we'll have K-pop, we'll have Latin, we'll have country. So we have a chance for kids to be able to see, like, a real wide variety of music yeah, and meet people from different genres, but all who work in the industry. So, totally. so it's, you know, it, that's why being at Prudential Center is so, so important. Yeah. And could you also take me through too, like you mentioned uh, also, especially now being able to kind of tap into, you mentioned the 76ers and, and the commanders and, and all these things and these different markets. And while they're not like super different than what Newark is, cause they're not too far away, they are like a little bit different in kind of the way that they operate, I guess right. I would imagine. Um, have you been able to take some of the stuff that you're doing here and you said kind of like building here and then, you know, using it in these other markets yet? Or is that something that you're still that's we're on? building towards? Okay. Um, so there's one program here that we're we're starting this year. It's called Backstage Pathways. We're doing this in partnership with the New Jersey Performing Arts Center is down the street. Mm -hmm. And it's being funded, actually underwritten by the Devil's Youth Foundation. And so this is a year-long program for young people who want to learn about uh, theater tech, concert production, et cetera. And our hope is that we're going to help them then move into the unions that actually do these things in places like our buildings. So we're working on, with the unions to do that as well. To Basically, it's like a pre-apprenticeship apprenticeship program. Sure. Um, and so... That model we've started this year. We're starting literally uh, in a few weeks. That we want to take into the other areas as well. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're piloting them here and then moving them into the other places. And the, the thing is, there may be – sometimes it's just a matter of, like, who's the decision makers are sure. in different areas. Yeah. But the need is everywhere. Right. Yeah, the, yeah. Need, the, the, the programs themselves, you may modify for certain things, but the need is still the need. Kids are still the kids. Right. Um, so we feel confident that once we have it locked down here, we'll be able to do that really, you know, with resources wherever we want. And, and again, the resources that our team, our managing partners are committed to, they're so committed to these types of programs. That's why I'm very fortunate that usually you work in a place that does this kind of work. They don't have resources. They're struggling. They're nonprofits and things like that. And they're doing great work but they don't have the resources available like an arena sure. or a sports team or concerts and that can able, be able to do those things. So I, I'm, I'm really fortunate that we're here in a place where they put their money where their mouth is, yep. so to speak, yep. um, and they invest in back into the community, which is something that's very important to me and it's very important to them. So it really works out very well. Yeah, and you also mentioned too, um, and I don't know if this is – uh, part of uh, what Record High does. And if it's not, then you can tell me and we'll totally cut it. Um, <laughs> but when you mentioned like different programs and how like this is a five week program, this is a summer camp, this right. is a, all these things. And, but you also mentioned how kids, like you said, have come for the last four or five years in some cases and get, you've kind of been able to see their growth. Yes. Um, when the program is over, are there still like resources available for the kids even beyond that, like to kind of tap back into what Record High has to offer, or is it kind of like looking for the next program that comes up? Well, there's me. Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which it's is like, a resource, uh, totally. No, I, I actually, and whenever we do our camps and everything, I, I tell them, I say, you're now my student for life, mm -hmm. uh, that if you ever have a business question, I said, I can't give you legal advice, I'm not sure. a lawyer. Yep. But if you had a business question or someone's offering you something, and you don't know what to do, you feel free to call me. So I, I'm amazed at how many kids have taken me up on that. Yeah, I'm which is great. Yeah, yeah it, and I'm sorry, I think more sh probably should, because um, the worst thing you guys always try to tell them, no deal is better than a bad deal. Right. Uh, don't sign the bad deal, yeah. you know. Uh, so we, we've had a lot of those. We have that resource. Um, but again, the alumni events that we've done, mm -hmm. uh, it bringing them back together and their collaborations, that's probably the biggest thing, is that they still have that network Right. That they're able to connect with and collaborate with. Beyond that, I'd love to create a, something more formal. But right now it's more, it's probably colloquial, you know. Sure. Is that the right word? It's something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's off for a it's living. It's awesome, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, it's bespoke. Yeah. Oh, I like that. You like that? Yeah. I don't know what it means. 
I, I, say, I think it's like a, one of those blanket terms that just kind of people use it. Things, yeah. People will know what it means. Like I, this, this yeah. book is bespoke. I feel like you know, like like <laughs> one of those kind of. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's very bespoke. This pen, all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. I just use it. I don't, that's my. What's important? It sounds awesome. It sounds you like know. you know what you're talking. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So I know uh, taking you know workshopping things here in in the Newark area and bringing them to you know Philly uh, and is it in DC? I guess. It, Pretty DC, Maryland, DC, yeah. Maryland area. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that you're working on with Record High and kind of building towards. Are there other things that you're building towards right now that are important initiatives for Record High? Yes. Um, the thing that I'm working on right now is a program, sort of an honors program. What I want to do is this would be more right now. People sign up and do our programs. It's anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to create sort of a specialized program, audition based for people who, young people who are the best at what they do right now, whether it's singing, songwriting, instrumental, whatever the case is, yeah. uh, production, and bring them to get all different genres and bring them together. And then again, start ha- allowing them to have mentorship with people who are in the industry, music publishers, record labels, managers, and really focus on the young people who really have the potential to be the next Whitney or the next Bruce, or whatever sure. it is, yeah. um, and really give them that opportunity. So sort of an all-star program yeah, is totally. what, what I'm looking to do. Yeah. Um, so that's the, probably one of the big initiatives for me right now mm-hmm. is to figure that out and uh, develop that over probably the next year. But that I'm very excited about because I think, again, there's so many young people who are very talented. They just need they need to shove in the right direction, sure. basically, some yeah. guidance. And, we all do it at some point, yeah. especially like when you know you see someone that has – like you're talking about this, like an honors program type thing that kind of has that thing, the it, right. you know, like, you know, it, like, just put them on the right track, you right. know, and then the resources, give them the successful. resources. And again, hopefully protect them from the, the sure, exactly. that, uh, yeah, which exists, that, that yeah. exists and, and we'll get you to sign something that you're now locked into and for many years. Yeah. So trying to guide them through that. So that's a big, that's a big initiative for me. And I think it really fits in nicely with record high and again what we're doing here on these stages yeah. uh, with these great artists we want to have our that's a, that's my goal is to have our kids at some point playing at the venues that we yeah. manage that we book and maybe one day on this stage that would be pretty amazing that yeah that would be amazing um if people are listening to this and they're saying to themselves wow i, I want to get involved somehow are there ways to get involved with record high for like someone like me or just like the average new jerseyan the big thing for that we re- need right now, um, we need help. We need to, more educators to know what we're doing. Because, for example, when we do these audio tech and lighting tech and, and sound recording workshops, that's driven by teachers mm-hmm. that are putting kids in a bus and bring because we can't bring that to them. They yeah. have to come to us. Um, so a field trip in essence. So what we really want to help with is that people, if you have educators in your life, at the, especially at the high school level, who are who have young people that they think would be interested in these programs go to the recordhigh.org that's our website you can go to the contact there fill out a note you can get more information of what we're doing we really want to spread the word to as many educators that here's what we're doing and if you have young people in your classrooms or if you're just a person as someone in your life who you feel like could benefit from this yeah Send them to us, and we'll figure out which programs they would work in. Or if you're a teacher, obviously, we can organize a, 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 an actual workshop. Sorry. But so, yeah, it's just a matter of really getting the word out. So if you have, again, if young people in your life, um, go to that, therecordhigh.org. Send us a note on the contact, and we'll figure out a program for them to do. Awesome. Well, this has been great, and I really appreciate you chatting with me and hanging out. And we'll make sure that we put therecordhigh.org in the show notes, people just go click it, go check it out. Um, I think we hit all the stuff that we needed to hit, right? I think we did. Awesome. Well, you're like a pro. This has been huh. phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answers, good length of answers, all that. Well, I interview a lot of people. Right. So That's, you know what uh, I'm looking yeah. for. Sometimes those are my, well, a lot of times they are my best interviews or just kind of like the flow, right. you know, so it's, it's very helpful. So I appreciate you. Thank well, you so much. Same here. Thank you, Mike. I Absolutely. It. Um, all right. So, like I said, we'll make sure we put the recordhigh.org in the show notes, uh, like we always do, along with greenishmithgardenstate.com, so you can get this episode, which you already got, but all the other episodes, information about them, information about our guests, information about the show, um, and all the other stuff that we're doing. 
Again, this has been the Greetings for the Garza podcast powered by the New Jersey Lottery. I'm Mike Cam. He was Mark Conflin. We were here at the Prudential Center at the Prudential Lounge inside the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.